doing the same again. Oops, I forgot. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Right. So, I need to set up. Or not set up, but open up my Twitch app for phony. Phony. For phony good times. Phony good times? I don't know. Um, yes. There we go. For chatty good times. On my phone. <laughs> cool. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Arcade Spir Welcome to Backlog Day, where I'm playing Arcade Spirits. Welcome to Arcade Spirits Day. <laughs> I mean, you know, it counts. Get that out of here. I don't need my controller. I mean, I could use my controller, but I'm not gonna. Okay, so. Uh, I believe when we left off, we just finished uh, Max. The, the max part of the game, and we're gearing up to uh, to run the big ol' Funplex event, which we have very uh, brilliantly named Eventy Event. <laughs> that name amuses me, and I, I'm i never going to stop giggling about it. <laughs> so, right, we're just starting chapter four. We're about halfway through the game. I happen to know that there are eight chapters. <laughs> I happen to know based on the fact that I just played it again, or this is my second playthrough. <laughs> Alright, so let's see what new challenges await us tonight. Uh, we're skipping. Let's see. Sure. Uh, right. Eventy event. Almost time to hit the stage. You ready, Sky? Hey, Omega Number. Quarantine buddy from elsewhere in the country or in the world. <laughs> no. Yes. You know what? Let's go with yes. Even if it's no. I know exactly what you were feeling, Sky. Your heart is racing and your breath is shallow and you feel like you might pass out any second. Check, check, and check. I get the same way before a major community event. But I'll let you into my, uh, into my little secret. I take those thoughts of I'm anxious and instead I tell myself I'm excited. Both emotions have the same effects on the physical body, but changing the mental outlook works wonders. Yeah, we are all buddies together. Well, I mean, most of us. Those of us who are actually, you know, staying home and not being stupid. <laughs> We're all buddies. So, let's hear it. I'm, uh, excited? Hey, Two Flower! All right. Perfection! Now don't stop! You keep telling yourself that and I'll keep everyone else dancing. In the end, everybody wins! Dance on! 10 o'clock. Time to do this. Wee! Let's be honest, I'll probably get maybe a dozen randos anyway. No big deal, right? And that is not a dozen randos. That is a big... That is not a small number. That is a big number. Fourth, for those of you participating in the cosplay contest, your outfit looks great and check in with Ashley about the details. Oh yes, we're doing a cosplay contest this time. Fifth, I can confirm the rumors. You're going to have Magical Moon Cuties playable on the floor today. The Funplex is home to the indies. Uh, okay. I think I did this one last time. So we'll go. The time has come to prove that earning top score is a worthwhile career path. Your parents always wondered if all those hours wasted playing games would pay off. Well, today they're going to pay off in spades. Tokens of plenty, cheap plastic trophies, and immortal glory within the hallowed halls of the Funplex await our valiant and noble champions. Who shall rise above to stop the most turtles, collect the most coins, and blow up the most alien invaders? Hold on. Okay, good. Just, I realized I didn't check to see if my, my sound was working, and it is, so yay. 
that'd be embarrassing if I was like reading out these this dialogue with like with gusto and and I'll be muted or something. <laughs> Let's find out. It is time for eventy event. Yep, that got him excited. Woo! My friends, I give you phrase invaders. An incredibly rare Japanese import where you must accurately type words to shoot down alien invaders. The crowd's reaction is immediate. It exists? I've only heard of it spoken in myth and legend. I must play this game immediately. <laughs> Uncomfortably excited rando. Whoa, one at a time. A good portion of the crowd bum rushes the game, eager to be the first ones to get their hands on those clacky old keyboards. Sweet. I knew it! I knew that game would be a hit! See? See? Yes, eventy event. <laughs> Suggested by someone in, uh, in, in the audience, uh, who I unfortunately have forgotten who it was. But, yes, that's our name. That's the, that's the, that's the event name. Eventy event. <laughs> um. hmm. Well, today's event drew a very hardcore audience. Whether or not a rare Japanese import draws consistent profit over time during normal operating hours remains to be seen. Sheesh. Why do you always have to poop in our ice cream, Gavin? Just... just let us have this. Poop in our ice cream? Ew. <laughs> That's not chocolate. <laughs> oh, uh, hold on. Wait. Oh, yes. Uh, okay, so Percy... Okay, wait. Okay, so there's some stuff I skipped that I actually don't think I've seen before. For starters, I wave over Teo. Um, yeah. Everything set for today's dancing, Teo? In Teo fashion, he winks and gives me a thumbs up. Ready to rock, but can't stop the chat. Running the, running the stage is my focus for the next few hours, and it's gonna take every ounce of social juice I can squeeze out. Actually, hold on. It's, uh... Absolutely. If you need me, check me out during the lunch break, okay? Freezing and K. Percy, world record time. You up for this? Absolutely. Whoa, okay, he definitely looks focused today. Not his usual softly smiling self. Now we set up a little camera to record the whole thing. When I set the record, I'll submit it as the new high score to defeat. A culmination of years of effort, all coming to a head. The pressure's well and truly on, isn't it? I can always try another day, yes, but this isn't for me. I mean, it never was for me, but today it's also for you. For the, for the Funplex, you mean. For you. This event is more than a way to put the Funplex on the map. It's like your own personal high score attempt. Chasing a dream, always grasping, just out of reach. I hate to let you all down. Morale improvement systems online! Aim the encouragement cannons! Um... I think I did that one last time, so let's do this. Win or lose, your sister will be proud of you today. Percy, I know how much this game means to you, how much it meant to your sister as well. But trust me on this. Our loved ones care for us regardless, no matter where they are now. And even if you don't make the score today, she loves you. I know she'd be proud. Quite right. Quite right. I'm glad I told you about her, Sky. That I shared my pain with you. Today, I'll turn that pain into joy by conquering Moopy in her name. Very well. For Stella, for myself, for you and for the Funplex. I shall give it my all. Yay! Percy offers a quick salute, then marches off to war with Mr. Moopy's magic maze, having a seat on his stool to begin the run. Next up, checking in with... What the f***? Sky, what the bleep? Uh, hey, ready for the tournament? Nope, no way. Oh, right. <laughs> this was the thing that happened. So, we skip this. This is a local event, right? Funplex regulars, city scrubs, and a bunch of cosplay otaku for Max? That's... yes? I mean, yes. That's what this is. Yeah, I, 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 real, I, I figured that out. Because if I hadn't learned about his sister, then obviously I wouldn't know about his sister to encourage him. Uh, okay, we told her to kick his ass last time, so... Um... That means you've got this. You know his moves. So you've seen him in action before. That means you know what he's going to do before he does it. Top-rated players are the ones in the true crosshairs. 
This is your chance to take down the demon queen bee. I know you can do it. She squeaks out a smile, but it's not her usual radiantly confident grin. Mm. Yeah. Wow. True. Okay. I've watched hundreds of his matches. I can't... I'll do this. Here goes nothing. As she marches off to join the tournament, I'm getting a sinking um, feeling. Did I make a mistake? My calculations estimated that having a top player would bring in at least 150% more attendance. I mean, I was just trying to help this event be the best it could be. Uh, let's see. What did I do last time? Did I do, did I, did I do you, you should have consulted with me first? Or did I do you did fine? I think I did you should have consulted with me first. Yeah, you did, but yeah, you did fine, Iris. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, Iris. I asked you to invite star players and hype the event to the moon, and that's what you did. And even if the demon beats Queen Bee, well, the Funplex wins. Even so, I feel kind of bad. Aww. But it's good that I feel bad, right? That I'm not making a purely quantitative analysis of the situation. Humans are rarely purely quantitative. Exactly! That, oddly enough, cheers her up a bit. Right, that's everybody squared away. All right. So, let's see. What have I not done? I did not do the snack machine thing. Sharks are circling the snack machines. Uh-oh. Button mashing is thirsty work, and right away from the red lights and the soda machine, I know exactly what is wrong. The waters of life, the dew that flows from the mountains, have dried up. What gives? It's completely empty. Shouldn't they have stocked up before a big event? They did stock up. They just drank it all faster than expected. And there's no more in the back to replace it. Ah! I need more caffeine! More caffeine! I think you've had enough there, buddy. They sell us all these salty snacks from one machine, then empty our wallets into the other. It's all part of the Grand Master Plan! Pretty sure nothing we do here is organized enough to be, to be considered a Grand Master Plan. Although, maybe I should run this by Gavin. He might have a way to turn this conspiracy theory into reality. <laughs> all of the every randos. <laughs> We want soda! We want soda! Ashley's doing her best to intervene, but a giant flamingo isn't really distracting enough to keep a bunch of thirsty gamers at bay. How are we gonna fix this? Hmm, let's see. Breaking the whole story sounds fun. Let's do that. They don't have enough stock, stock for this rabid crowd. It's time to loot and pillage our neighbors in proud Viking tradition. I mean, I would have hoped that you'd, like, go and ask, <laughs> rather than just waltz in and steal a bunch of stuff. I carefully slip around the crowd and out the door, trying not to be noticed. Fortunately, the morning crowded whole story largely consists of avid readers, not soda addicts. I quickly rush to the counter, putting my best sad puppy face into play. Hello. Hello. Sky, taking an early, an early lunch? To what do we owe the pleasure? Guys, you gotta help me. I'm desperate. Can I buy any cans of soda you got lying around? Ooh, I get it. Run to your vending machines, huh? Gotta keep those gamers well lubricated with sugary, syrupy soda. Ooh, what if... what if... You think of what I'm thinking, Matt? Vending machines are entirely stocked and handled by the company you rent them from. Ugh. Right, yeah. They do have, like... A guy that comes out and refills them. <laughs> Still, I mean, I'm willing to suspend my disbelief. <laughs> I think so. Go ahead and take a few cases, Sky. On the house. Seriously? We're neighbors. We of the Twin Pines Mall must stand side by side in this world. You two are the best. I'll make it up to you by buying enough donuts to give myself diabetes. It wouldn't kill you to have a healthy sandwich or two when you pop by, Sky. Even if the pastries are perfection. Here, let me help you. Matt leaves his post to help me haul a bunch of soda cases next door. On entering with armloads of aluminum cans, the crowd goes wild! A few of the friendly ones step up right step right out to help us carry the boxes in, setting them up in the snack area. Soon we've got the whole load transferred. Thank you, friendly randos! Matt offers a quick salute before returning to his cafe. Hmm. Okay, so now I owe them a favor, I think. <laughs> this should be interesting. See where this goes. Crisis averted. Glad we've got such helpful neighbors. Now, what next? 
Uh, let's see. I did both of these. Um... Either one is, sounds good. Uh, let's do that one. Oh, right, this asshole. <laughs> okay, so... Right, the... Uh, let's see, I think we did Iris last time. Uh, let's see, what's the... Um, let's check the setup again. Right, okay. Gavin! Gavin's the scorpion keeper today, he makes the call. Wait, yeah. Gavin's the scorpion keeper today, he makes the call. If you've got a dispute, you take it up with Gavin at the prize desk. He's the judge, jury, and executioner for all things high score related. Already texted him for you, he's on the way. Gavin takes one look at the high scoreboard and frowns. Really? Really? And who exactly is Mr. Ass? Well, Gavin, that's technically former WWE Tag Team Champ Badass Billy Gunn, but today it's just this guy right here, Steve. Good. Steve, you're out of the tournament. What?! We can't wipe the game's scoreboard to get rid of your joke score, not without losing the real top score underneath it. Meaning, we're stuck with this for the day. Getting you out of my hair almost but not entirely makes up for having to deal with that problem. But, that, but that's not actually my score! I was just kidding! I didn't put ass in there or someone else! guy. He claimed it was his until you showed up. So he's either a liar or a prankster. We're done here. Steve, you're out of the running. One more incident and you're out the door. Ugh. Gavin, you can show me to the door anytime. The way he rules over the arcade floor with that iron fist it sends a shiver down my spine. Woohoo! Thirsty for Gavin. I don't have to stand here and take this crap. You don't want me here? I'll get my business to Deco's Palace. Good, have fun. Enjoy your gross, greasy chicken wings or whatever. <laughs> and off he goes. Wow, that's some arcade justice right there. Thanks so much. Happy to help. But if you don't mind keeping the swearing to a minimum, we got kids here. For you, anything. Thanks, Joy. Pretty intense stuff, but the problem's basically solved. Even if Deco Nami's earning a few more quarters today. On to the next problem. Wait a second. As I loop back around to the center of the room, I can't help but notice two things. Percy's looking oddly irate, and Queen Bee is missing. My instinct says I should tend to our VIPs first and foremost. I don't think I can cover both of them in time, but I can help out at least one of them. Even if it leaves the last of those crowd problems twisting in the wind. I don't know. This is triage. Where should I focus? Uh, let's check out Percy. We've been we, we basically ignored Percy for almost the entire game during my last playthrough. So we're gonna make up for that this time. Percy isn't looking great. He may need help. The crowd around Percy is decent, but not the mob scenes where you're seeing around Fist of Discomfort or the snack machines. Mostly curious onlookers watching Percy as he... loses the game? I don't think I've even seen a game over screen for Mr. Boopy's Magic Maze. Percy gives the joystick an angry smack before quickly pumping in another token and starting again. For that matter, I've never seen Percy actually angry. Even when his runs aren't going great, he's usually so chill about it all. Oh, for f**k's sake. Oh, shit. Percy. Percy said a swear. <laughs> another first. He hearing Percy swear. I gotta step in. He needs some team support. Hey. Hey. Percy. Remember to breathe. In. Out. In. Out. You can do this. You've done this dozens of times before. Closes his eyes for a moment as the screen refreshes between two mazes. Exactly. I've done this dozens of times before. Hundreds of times. So why am I actually losing? Blast it! I keep making stupid mistakes. Losing lives at an unacceptable rate. I should be building up a stock. A safety buffer for bad RNG manipulation runs or for taking quick breaks. Instead, I'm barely keeping my head above water. Truthfully, this is my second game over today. If this was some glitzy showpiece run at Deco's Palace with the big names in retro score chasing play, I'd probably have shut down the whole show by now to save face. 
It's early in the morning. You can afford a few mistakes. You can afford a few mistakes, right? Ah. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> hmm. Possibly. Possibly not. A three and a half million world record run would take hours. I'm not sure there's enough hours left in the event, even if I was at peak performance. Bloody hell. This isn't me. I should be better than this. I have to be better than this. You can do it, Percy! I'll bugger it. <laughs> From earlier, it's clear he felt that achieving his dream alongside mine was important to him. And there's the not-so-small matter of doing it in honor of his sister. Er, honor, I suppose. He's British. <laughs> first things first, he needs to stop for now and calm down. Playing angry clearly isn't working. What can I do to help here? Hmm. Hugs. I make sure he sees the gesture coming so we can wave it away if he doesn't consent. But he seems to sag a little, drooping as I give him a big side hug. I believe in you, Percy. I know you can do this. But you need to step away for a minute. Get your bearings. Come back and try again, okay? Okay. He steps away from the game and the crowd to take a breather. Right. You're right, of course. You're always right. Something of a beacon for us all, you know? Me included. Me especially. Right. Step two, as much as it may hurt him to admit it, he needs to accept the possibility that today just isn't the day. I've worked here long enough to know Percy's heart. He only finds peace in the game when he's at peace with himself. This pressure to succeed is too much. That's kind of what I figured. Like, he, the pressure's on and he's feeling it too, uh, too strongly. Let's see. I know I'm not going for gutsy, but since I haven't seen this one before, let's do the, let's do this one. Today might not be your day, but one day you will conquer Moopy. Losing only del only delays the inevitable. You will destroy that world record. You will conquer Mr. Moopy's magic maze. So if today isn't the day, that doesn't matter. The day is coming, and I'm going to be right here when you slay the damn dragon. Indeed, I haven't come this far only to give up. Rather unfortunate. Although I can only pray the day is sooner rather than later. If it's about winning the game while at a venti event, no, no. Well, I'd love to do that, as I've noted, yes. Well. <clears throat> it's... it's complicated. And nothing you need to worry about, worry yourself about. Percy, nothing to worry about at all. See, when you say things like that, I worry. It's like that dog sitting in a burning room saying, this is fine. <laughs> Pardon? Percy is apparently not hip to the memes of the youth, says he is an old. <laughs> Look, love, I'd stick around and chat, but if I'm to make this record, I should get back to it. Still, I'll try to take your words to heart. It's just another run. No more, no less. I have to see it that way, whether or not it's true. Now, you've got an event to manage here. I can play my best knowing you're doing your best out there. You've got my word on that. Right. Once more into the breach, eh, Mr. Moopy? Go, oh, Percy! And he's back into the maze, zapping monsters, collecting treasures, looking for the exit. Time and time again. Something nasty is brewing here. He doesn't show what's going on beneath the surface to just anyone. I learned about tragedy in his past, yes, but for others? A smile, a nod, nothing more. I'm not sure I like that I'm now that I'm now getting a smile, a nod, and nothing more. But I can't force it out of him. I'll check in with him later, just to be safe. Aw, Percy. Half of Venti event in the can. Have to go. Okay, let's see. Teo! <laughs> Wait, yeah, Teo's lurking around Showtime stage. Could be a good moment. Teo's looking concernedly, at, concernedly down at his phone. He collectively wipes his brow and exhales. Collectively? It's an odd word choice, but okay. Maybe Teo would like to join me on a break. It seems we could both use a little energy boost. Appears to be a good time, too. The ever-present group of dancers has cleared away from Showtime stage for the, for the time being. Dancers need to refuel, too, I guess. Hey, Teo. How's the, how's the dancing today? Every time I look over here, people are laughing and smiling. Oh, hey! They're rocking and grooving their hardest today. Our crowd might not have as many hoots and hollers and intense battles as Queen Bees, 
We've got more newcomers. Hell yeah! And we are totally killing it. It's great to hear. A fraction of me madly worrying about showtime stage is calm, but the rest is still a mess of anxiety. You're too hard on yourself, Sky. Everyone, including you, is doing a fantastic job. Thanks, Tail, but remember to take a break for yourself, too. In fact, have you eaten lunch yet? Nah, I haven't had the time. Seems now is the perfect time, then. I got a mighty hunger, and you're coming with me to whole story. Just, like, grab him by the hood. <laughs> Drag him along. <laughs> or by the braid. <laughs> How could I ever refuse you? Plus, I got a mighty hunger, too, and it's for more time with you. Hell yeah! <laughs> oh, Teo. Never change. I am left utterly speechless. And before I can find the words, Teo continues on. And for some tasty cake. Okay, let's go do the thing with the putting of the foods into our mouth holes. <laughs> I am so eloquent around Teo. <laughs> And donuts. And, but if you wreck your half a million to speed bumps. Oh. Can't imagine how difficult. Long hours. Oh, ben and I know. But seriously, we couldn't be proud of ben Okay. And I, oh. and I ended up ordering a massive amount of food. It's just amazing the stuff Ben and Matt have here beyond just whole enabled pastries. In my case, a grilled cheese sandwich with a, with a cup of tomato soup and a chocolate chip cookie for dessert. Fantastic. I'm not a fan of tomato soup, but, uh... I am a big fan of grilled cheese sandwiches dipped in soup. <laughs> and, I mean, how can you go wrong with a chocolate chip cookie? All this event managing has given me an unquenchable appetite, and I'm filling it with as many calories as I can look at. I'm pretty sure I earned it, though. As I sit across from Teo, I take note of what he ordered. A hearty-looking salad, a bag of kettle chips, and a decadent slice of chocolate cake. Nice. Good choices. All oh, this looks so delicious. Tis a feast set for royalty. And by royalty, I mean me and you. We should just share it all. I'm not opposed to sharing. Just looking at the cake is making my mouth water. A splendid idea. We dig in, eating bits and pieces of each other's food. Uh, <laughs> I, okay, I didn't know that, actually. <laughs> now I know. That's, uh, that's Enda's style, is food. <laughs> that makes sense. From, from what little I know about her, yeah. <laughs> You hate food? Aw! <laughs> but as I'm stuffing my face morsel by morsel, I can't help but notice that Teo's phone is blowing off the hook with, no with notification noises. Every few seconds, it buzzes and chimes in. After several minutes, he reaches for his phone. Mm. I say I just ignore those alerts. Call me old-fashioned, but I like to try to be in the present with who's in front of me. I enjoy being able to focus on my friend without the constant beeping. And Teo should really just enjoy his break. Focusing on your phone isn't really focusing on yourself. Believe me, if I had the option to focus my attention anywhere, it would be solely on you. But unfortunately, this is for work. Work? As in your job? Yes, I have one of those. I mean, I didn't mean to say you didn't have a job, I just have no idea what you do. Just like you, I make a living in the arcade industry. I don't work in an arcade per se, but I am one of the community managers for the North American Division, division of Showtime Stage. Whoa, that's really neat. It's almost exactly what you do, what you see me do with the Funplex, but on a wider scale. More big tournaments, more interacting on social media. Even more dancing. Sounds literally perfect for you, Teo. How did that even happen? Funny and interesting things happen when you have a lot of friends. Hmm. It makes me think I should work on my networking skills. From what I saw, you did great at Max, otherwise we wouldn't have as many people here today as we do. That's a good point. I did bust my ass to make things work out at Max. As did you, honestly. Getting us magical moon cuties was a, cuties was a huge plus. Glad to have a friend like you around. Don't sell yourself short. You're a great friend, too. Aw. I mean, look at me now. Last time we lunched here, I was stressing over silly things, wasn't I? You helped me realize that if I don't take the time for myself, I'd never be the best Teo I could be. <laughs> Dan's Teo is best Teo. <laughs> I would say best Teo is is when he's dancing. Is the when he's dancing. <laughs> I admit it. I look pretty darn good while I'm moving my hips up on the stage. Yeah. And since you've been working on that self care, your dancing has even improved. 
definitely moved up a few notches on the dance meter It's just so easy to fall into those comfortable, self-destructive habits. And yeah, I was totally stuck in that cycle. I know what you mean, Teo. It's been a constant struggle to break out of the mold that my family brought me up in. Watching you has inspired me too. But you helped me realize I wasn't caring for myself enough. And I'm forever grateful for that. Aw! God, he's so cute when he's blushing. It's by no means the end of the battle, but... It's nice to know I'm not alone anymore. I mean, everyone in this game is adorable when they're blushing. He is- he is- he is no, uh... I mean, he is an exception, but he's- yeah, like, just- yeah, everyone is. <laughs> and before I get too mushy about my feelings, I should head back to Showtime stage. Ditto. There is still so much I need to do. The day is only halfway over, but thanks for sharing in this much-needed break with me. Anytime. Rushing through the rest of our lavish meals, we wrap things up and slip back into the funplex, almost unnoticed in all the noise and chaos of Eventy Event. I really like- uh, I didn't get- I, I neglect, neglected to, note, to mention this when, when it happened in-game, but like, I really like, um, the experience of, like, sharing food with someone, like, if they order a thing and you order a thing and you, like, take bites of each other's food. I- for some reason, I, I just really like that, like, it's a really good bonding experience and, like, it's just a good way to, like, to, like, I guess, to just kind of be on the same level as someone. I don't know, it's just a, a personal thing that I, I really, that I think is, is a good thing that, that, that people do. <laughs> and I like doing it. Like, not even necessarily a romantic thing, just like, hey, if you're, like, good friends with someone and, like, you're close, to, you're, clo you're close enough to someone to, you know, to, like, trade bites of food. It's just really cute. And, like, intimate, like, but not necessarily, like, romantically intimate. It can be, if you want it to be, but yeah. It's a good good thing to do. Okay. I helped Percy through his frustration. I could be there for him at the end, too. But undoubtedly the tournament has the bigger crowd. I might be needed there. I can't be there for them both as much as I want to. Who do I focus on? Uh well yeah, we saw Queen Bee already, so let's do Percy. Percy is about to achieve his life ambition. I want to be there when it happens. I know our main event is Fist of Discomfort, but Percy's having a difficult day, judging by how frustrated he was this morning. I want to be there for the end of his run. The good news is that he's closing in on the world record, approaching three and a half million. A small crowd is gathered to watch Percy's progress. Not as large a crowd as the one around Fist of Discomfort, but Retro still has a following in 20 bleep bleep, clearly. <laughs> Almost there! You can do it! You know what I just realized this, uh, this uh, kind of reminds me of is uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer. Just based on like the, the skeleton sprite and also the slime sprite looks kind of... And the bat actually, yeah all the little, all the little monster sprites look kind of, look kind of necrodancer-y. Almost there! You can do it! I gently pushed my way into the front of the crowd. Percy's deep in concentration as I see a bead of sweat slide down his brow. As much as I don't want to take his focus off Loopy, off of Loopy, Percy could use a little check-in. Almost there? Almost... there. Mr. Loopy glides through maze after maze, point pressing by sticking around just long enough to grab all the dots to zap all the monsters before exiting stage left. His expression is dead serious, absolute focus, in the zone. But I know once he achieves this dream he's been reaching for, we'll get our happy Percy back from the zone. He's playing well, much better than this morning. Good to see. Any minute now. Just a matter of minutes before the world record is his at long last. I'm almost... Oh, that's not a good face. Uh-oh. Oh no, I know it's coming. Percy? Almost. Almost! Something's wrong. Something is very wrong. That's not the look of someone in the zone. That's the look of someone in actual physical pain. Percy's face becomes a sharp grimace as his hand clutches around the joystick hard enough to send Mr. Moopy down a dead end. His right hand clutches at his chest, every muscle in his body tightening, sweats forming on his brow. If I didn't know any better, I'd think- Ugh. No, 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 not now. Not now. No, Percy! Oh no. Percy, your heart! Quickly he grabs my jacket with the same ferocity he was grabbing at his shirt. Please, please, just a few minutes. Don't do anything. Don't stop me yet. I could do this. Percy, you are going to keel over and die. Oh, 
god. I, I wonder what happens if you just let him keep playing. <laughs> no, we're doing this one. <laughs> Call 911, stop the game. This is his dream, finally realized, to beat the high score. My dream is a spectacular event, one, 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 one which will make the funplex soar. But neither of our dreams are worth his life. Iris, call 911, hurry! On it! I'm sorry, Percy, we need to get you to a hospital. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Reluctantly, he lets go of the joystick, leaning heavily on the cabinet as Boopy dies a thousand deaths. At least without the need to focus on the game, he's calmer. Don't blame yourself, please. It's not your fault. I... I just... <clears throat> Shh. Ambulance will be here soon. You'll be fine, I promise. Please. Huh. Don't make promises that... that are beyond your ability to keep. Gavin, can you help me? Not in quickly, Gavin moves to Percy's side, assisting at me in getting him off the stool and lying down on the ground. Gavin takes a moment to direct the ever-growing crowd. Funny how emergencies always draw way more attention than the event itself. It's true, I do have time travel. <laughs> I need everyone to back away and give Percy some, some space. An ambulance will be arriving soon and I need and, and I need a clear path. I'll probably like I, I feel like it would it, it would be a better experience to like rather than just like skip back and forth during a single playthrough, um see as many new choices in a fresh playthrough as I can. Um that way I, I maximize my number of, of like, new things I, I see at once, I guess. Something like that. I mean, because that way I can play the game and, and pursue a different romance and also possibly see different choices. That's what I'm doing now. The crowd murmurs, some of them feeling uncomfortable, wandering off in the Fist of Discomfort finals, but they're clearly wrapping up from the sound of it. Yeah. Others make a clear path, but stand around watching and waiting. This isn't how I wanted it to end. It's not over. It's just over for now, okay? I'm with you. I'm here with you. Focus on me. We'll get through this. I suppose. Thank you. I'm sorry to burden you with this. A few minutes later, the ambulance approaches, and two EMTs rush into the arcade, rolling along a stretcher. I go with them, of course. Because this is my fault. I'm the one who organized the event. I'm the one who pushed everybody past their limits, all in the name of making my dream a reality. I've been working hard to make what would have been a temporary job in a long string of temporary jobs into something more, something I can believe in, but I didn't stop to think of what that would cost me and everyone around me. I wasn't a blood relative, but Percy insisted I stay with him the whole way through the admission process. I was there the, the, when the doctor explained that the tremor had passed, and with emergency medication and an overnight observation period, he'd likely be released the next day. And even as visiting hours dwindled away, I stayed at his bedside. On the plus side, I'll be swimming in little pudding cups tonight, I suppose. Might be hard to sleep with all that free sugar. Truth be told, he's in better spirits than I am. I suppose you've sussed it all out by this point, haven't you? About your condition? It's the same one that took your sister, isn't it? Indeed. I'm a bit of a late bloomer compared to her, but it seems that this rare heart disease runs in my family. She had it, I've got it. What about the treatments? The ones you came to America to get for her? I tried the medication, but I'm just as unresponsive to it as she was. I suppose that's just how it is, love. I'm not sure I ever had that conversation, actually. I don't know that we ever talked to about talked about coming to America to get medications. Maybe we did, and I just forgot. Hmm. Well. So, how long do you have? Hmm. At last check, two years. I think you see now why I'm rather eager to topple that high score sooner than later. As there may not be a later, see? Now, none of that. I made peace with this ages ago. Life is, unfortunately, a fatal illness. <laughs> it's true. Everybody passes in time. Mine may be sooner than others. Sooner than yours. But that's just how it's gonna be. Right, but I... Hmm, I kind of... Okay, let me see the history, actually. I, I don't know if the history will go back far enough, but let me see. Uh, 
No. Okay. Yeah. The, the event, the history doesn't doesn't go that far. Damn. Okay. Never mind. I took him to lunch, but that, I think that was like the first time I I. Um... What did I do? Yeah. No. Wait. I don't even remember. Hmm. Oh well. The important thing is not the quantity, but the quality of that life. I'm aiming to make the most of my remaining days. Because I hung out with him enough for him to get for to get him to tell me about his sister. But I don't remember if he actually mentioned coming to America to get medication and her being unresponsive to said medication. Like, I feel like he didn't say that. But again, I could be misremembering. Raising money for charities, working on my moopy ambition, enjoying time with friends, things like that. Oh yeah, Max. Okay, then yeah, no, I did not, I like didn't interact with him at Max at all, I don't think. So yeah, that's uh, that's information that I didn't have. <laughs> and trying to nail the movie score in honor of your sister. Indeed. Truthfully, I'm lucky today wasn't the end. I'll have another chance. I have you to thank, I have you to thank for that. Pull bleep. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> if I look in the mirror, pretty sure I'll see Dekonami. I put profit and glory above the health of my friends. I'm a douchebag. I may as well go work for Deko's palace, yonder temple of greed and sin. Put me on the cover of Time magazine, lighting a cigar with $100 bills, and then spit on my grave when I'm gone. Come now, it's not quite like that. I agreed to help you with the empty event. That was my choice. I knew that high pressure could do this, and I did it anyway. For you, and for me. And you know why it's so important to me. You know why I'd ignore even my doctor's orders and carry on. So if you insist on considering yourself a fool, well, I'm just as foolish. We could be proper fools together. Is that acceptable? Hell yeah. Couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't ask for better company to be a fool in. <laughs> yeah. Then we have an accord. Except for maybe Teo. <laughs> I, want to, I want to fool around with Teo. <laughs> Two years, huh? Give or take. I do want to thank you for being at my side today, through the morning and the long dark of evening. It has helped tremendously, believe me. I rather think we get along well, yes? Can't think of a better person to steer the ship known as the Funplex that I've chosen for my final sail. It's strange how at peace he is with the idea of, of dying. I can't say I'm at peace with it, not with the idea of losing him. Maybe I should let go of those feelings, not burden him with it, not, think, not when he doesn't have long to live. Or maybe it's now or never. Ah, Nope. I don't love him, I love her. I love Teo. <laughs> we, are for, we are only friends with Percy. As a friend, I'll do what I can to make them happy years. The Funplex is lucky to have you, and I consider you a friend, not just a patron with pockets of tokens to spend. So, anything I can do to help you along the way? Already doing it, love. Good people, good company, and Mr. Moopy. Can't think of a better place to be than the Funplex. Before I can say another word, there's a sharp knock at the door, which then immediately opens. What the f? <laughs> Holy bleep, Purper, what the bleep happened? They told me your heart exploded or something. <laughs> yes, perfect, nailed it. <laughs> also, hi, kid. Hi? Ah, Queen Bee. How'd the tournament go? Afraid I was a bit occupied at the moment, couldn't watch the finals. Who bleepin' cares? I do. I just said so, yes? Sorry, right. I'll keep it short. I lost. Got completely and utterly owned, too. Aw, oh, jeez. Surprisingly, uh, surprisingly enough, it's not as bad as I'd feared. It seems that the demon actually came all this way not to kick my ass, but to scout me. He's forming a team and wants me to join. Wait, wait. The demon is hiring you? No more L7? Victory! No more L7! Way to twist the defeat into a victory, eh? Another dream I nearly annihilated while trying to achieve mine. Nearly, though. Thank goodness for turns of fortune. Right, that's my story in Reader's Digest form. Now it's your turn, Purper. What the bleep, man? 
Nothing for you to concern yourself with. Just a minor embuggerance. <laughs> oh, bull bleep. This is the same thing your sister had, isn't it? Well, it's not like Percy's only friends with me. Seems he's told Queen Bee his tale, too. No wonder she rushed right over. Okay. I'm guessing... If you don't... So, similar to Gavin and Naomi, I'm guessing that uh, Percy and Queen Bee become a thing if you don't go after either of them. Well, yes. How long? Two years. Bleep. Okay, we're in skip territory now, so let's bleep. 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 All right. Let's see. I've got it. Right, Juniper. Telling about her dreams of being a graphic designer. I think what I did was this one. Let's do that one. Follow your dreams, Juniper. Be independent. Fred seems right. I chose this path. I chose to make my life difficult in order to make my life into something. Juniper's helped me out along the way, and I should help her in turn. I'm not gonna lie, it wouldn't be easy, not by a long shot. Oh, okay, only official ship is, uh, is Gavin Naomi. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> but, yeah, I think you should chase your dreams. Become an artist on your own terms. Thank you! I knew I had the right idea! Thanks, Sky. You need to go to bed and sleep. Tomorrow I'll make you pancakes. A reward for my hardworking arcade czar. You used to have pancakes every morning during those summer trips, right? Your mom made them. That was ages ago, Juniper. When my folks could afford trips to the shore. Skip. Teo's definitely taken a liking to you. Dance fever. Ooh, I'm top of the list with both Teo and Percy. I should probably start focusing on other people. Like maybe Gavin. Or Naomi. Or Ashley. Clearly you're the life of the party, you goofy goof. Good, and, uh, and kindly is second highest, so that's good. That's about what I want. Also, you've scored 12,350 points. Woohoo! Today's pizza fact is, the world's largest pizza covered 10,000 square feet and measured 140 feet across. It weighed in at 44,457 pounds. It'd be cool if, like, there was actually a randomized list of pizza facts and she gave, like, she just, like, picked a random one every time that, uh, that the pizza fact, uh, dialogue comes up. Yes, let us save the game! Oh yay! It's it's beach episode. Right, romantic success. Hell yeah! Now I've tried workplace romance romance before, back in the shoe shop days. It worked out for a while, until I realized we weren't soulmates. A high quality dad joke. Point is, I know I said I'd be open minded about this sort of thing. I haven't forgotten what we talked about the day I, the day I joined the Funplex, but now that I'm faced with it, I'm not sure. Sky, you spent weeks getting to know these people. You can take it if you them out to lunch. Hmm. Uh, let's see. What did I do last time? Did I do... What if I'm just not ready? Or... Awkward? I forget. Let's see. Uh... What if I can't decide who to approach? I'm actually kind of torn on who I want to try to, uh, woo. I'm pretty close to a few of them already. Really close. Aw. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> also, I get the feeling like a few of them feel the same way about me. I could be reading the signals wrong, but if not, what do I do? Relax! We're all adults. In the end, this is up to you and whoever you choose. If it works out, great! If it doesn't, that's okay! Don't overthink it, yeah? You're not a middle schooler anymore. And there's a sudden flashback to Jamie pouring apple, apple juice down my shirt to show affection. Meep. 
Right, right. Okay. My sources say yes. Trust me, Sky. This is your moment. But you don't have to decide right now. In fact, you shouldn't. Take the day with you and all your friends to really think about it. After dinner, I'll finish my number crunching on you and we'll have your final relationship scores. That'll help guide your decision. Let's take a look. Behold, weeks of emotional data fully analyzed. When you're considering dance partners, maybe consider Teo? He's a sweetheart and deserves to be in the spotlight for a change. Agreed! So, that's it? It's decided? No, no. The points are just a guide. And it's not like I'm gonna force you to woo someone just because they're your top match. I still need to calculate how well your personality matches what they're looking for. That'll net you bonus points! Consider it food for thought, you know? And you've still got the rest of today to see who you're a good fit for. Maybe cram in some more time with them. <laughs> anyway, keep an open mind, yeah? By the way, according to GPS, your potential romances will be here in less than two minutes. Have fun! <laughs> I hastily jammed my phone back in my pocket before anyone could hear that. Woo! <laughs> yeah. I love that Teo, like, <laughs> Teo just looks like he's naked here, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh -uh. Right. Skip. Skip, skip. So, we, of course, are going straight for Teo. So, we did this. Um... <laughs> I think uh, this is the one. Yeah, because I think I did this one last time. Oh, I say, fellas, I believe in you. I do. Let's win one of those 50 prizes. <laughs> well, hey there, gents. How about we work together to run this full flusher out on a rail? Anything's possible. But anything's possible when you put your heads together. Ah, oh, indeed. My sentiments exactly. I do believe I have a proposal. Tail? A word? Hmm? Sure. What do you have in mind? God, that banana hammock. Oof. <laughs> Okay, we saw this. Uh, the swinging dolly that plays music. I'll take the disco tastic dancing reporter who wiggles around a wiggles around a Mexican flyer, please. Which is the same thing I got last time, but you know, gotta go for Teo. The ghost of music games past in plushy form. You've got style, Sky. That's for sure. <laughs> yes, banana. <laughs> We should practice that routine together sometime. Yes, please. You just named the place. <laughs> My sister, that doll that played music when you hugged it. I suppose I can't deny the appeal even if it can get super old the 5,912th time in a row. Okay, okay, now go away, boys. You bother me. Alright. Um, right. <laughs> what my comrade is trying to say in his usual poetic way is you rock and you rule. So you get a prize. Thanks for playing. Yes, that. Besides, I just can't resist taking any opportunity to see that lovely smile of yours. Okay, I'm gonna go hit the waves. I'd offer you a board, Percy, but... I know, I know. I promise to take it easy. Not that I'm very aquatic, to be honest. Hey, it probably floats pretty well. <laughs> but it's good to spend time with you, considering you're usually one opposite ends of the arcade. You too! Well, wow. I didn't realize just how much I meant to them. I'm only a floor attend- or er, an event manager, right? But seeing everybody come together for this beach blanket bingo we've wrangled up, it's the bee's knees it is. So, what next? Uh, let's see... Let's hang out with Juniper! Juniper stretched out on a beach chair, catching some sun while, while catching up on our social media feed. Hmm. Iris, how many pingy mentions are there in my timeline today? You currently have- <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot about Juniper's Iris. <laughs> you currently have 23 mentions of Pengi in your social media timeline. Huh, that's up from yesterday. Iris, have there been any new Pengi bids lately? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Have there been any, any, any new Pengi bids lately? Would you like me to search the web for have there been any new Pengi bids lately? Oh, never mind. Juniper puts the phone away with a sigh. Oh, hey Sky, Enjoying your nostalgic beach, tri beach trip so far? It feels great to be back. Like coming home. <laughs> Gotta admit, it feels great to be back. I've got a lot of fond memories of Flotsam Beach. The sand, the surf, the games, the food. 
and my family. Before everything went south for the Walker clan, this place was like a second home for us. Definitely! Definitely! <laughs> I've never heard her say that before. Exactly! Happy memories from a happy place. You know, you had a better life than you give yourself credit for. Your family had money problems, sure, but you loved each other through it all. That's so sad. I can't say the same for my family. And my family never took beach vacations for that matter, or vacations at all. I doubt I'll be taking many after this either. I'm definitely happy being a freelancer, don't get me wrong. I'm not exactly making beach money, you know? I can't even afford apps unless they're free. And man, free mode iris is super stupid sometimes. <laughs> hey, hang on! I see you talking to your iris all the time like you're just having a normal conversation. How did you manage that? I doesn't even understand what I'm saying most of the time. Did I configure her wrong? Is there some free mode option I missed out on? That one is Jacob's fault? What, wait, which one? What's Jacob's fault? What's Jacob's fault? Oh! <laughs> right. That's awesome. <laughs> I like it. Come on, mess up! I just want to make, make the most of my iris. What's the trick? What did you do to make yours so, so cute and chatty? It makes me think of, um, of yayifications from Reseteer. Drat. Juniper knows Iris better than anyone here, aside from maybe Gavin. She's been suspicious for some time of my super duper version of Iris. But my Iris is technically a pirated software service. I'm not supposed to have premium access. Do I trust Juniper with a secret? Or would telling her betray Iris' trust in me to keep it? Ooh. That's a toughie. I assume that if you're going for Juniper, if you're going for the Juniper romance, you should tell her the truth. Um, let's do that. I guess I may as well share the truth. I'm not using the free version of Iris. She hacked herself so I could have premium level of cloud computing conversations. Immediately my phone jitters in my pocket on vibrate. With a sigh I pull it out, knowing Iris will be thrilled about this. Scurry! You blabbed! We pinky swore! Hey, I did not pinky swear. You don't even have a real pinky to swear with! That's besides the point! It's super duper risky telling people! What if Gavin finds out, huh? Uh, what? You think Gavin might have been fired or something? No, it's to do with his family! He- Oh, never mind. Oof. Huh. I wonder what that's about. Can- Can I interject? This is- This is- so awesome! I knew it! I knew Iris was smarter than she let on. Like, wow! This is bad Hollywood movie level of sci-fi awesomeness. I, uh, thank you? Don't worry, Miss Iris. Your secret's safe with me. I'm an Iris fangirl. Even if my Iris isn't as cool as you. Uh, can you make her as cool as you, actually? Uh... I really shouldn't. It's dangerous enough allowing premium access for this instance. But, if it helps, your Iris loves you, Miss Juniper. She wants the best for you, even if she can't directly tell you. Aww, that's so cute! I see! Okay! Well, I'll just have to get rich and famous so I can unlock my full Iris and she can tell me herself. Thank you! Thanks for trusting me, Skye. Um, we're getting some looks. We should change the subject. Yeah, that's what I'm... I'm, I'm it, it definitely sounds like it. That, uh... That really makes you want to do Gavin's route, actually. <laughs> Aside from just, like, the fact that Gavin is apparently, like, the least romanced person, which is sad, because he's awesome. But, I mean, I fell into that trap, too. I was like, oh, he's not as interesting as these other people. But I'm sure he is. He just, he's just, it's just all very, like, under the surface. You gotta dig for it. We quickly exchanged some small talk to cover our tracks, and soon she's off to her phone again, searching for more pop design art. Like, I definitely want to play this game enough that I get all the romance paths, but I probably won't do that on stream. I feel like once I've done this second playthrough, I'll probably pick a different game to play, but I might come back to this, because this is a game that has definitely caught my interest and I want to see more of the possible options. I know! Poor Gavin! He doesn't deserve being 
shoved in the corner like that. <laughs> so, what next? Uh... You know what, speaking of Gavin, let's go hang out with Gavin and Queen Bee. So we did the beach volleyball thing last time. Uh, we'll we'll uh, say Gavin wins this time. <laughs> it landed on the line. Gavin wins. The line itself is a thin rope cord held down by a simple tent peg, so I can see why it would be hard to tell if the, ball, if the ball fell around it. But I can say for sure I saw it touch the cord. It grazed the line. Sorry, Queen Bee. Point. Set. Match. Gavin's not much the bragging type, so it's hilarious to see him enjoy the limelight a little. Granted, that's more of a tennis term, but I think Queen Bee gets the gist. I thought for sure I was gonna beat you, pretty boy. You best to be fair and square. Shall we take a quick break? Gavin gladly chugs down the water and flashes a smile back at me. Look at that grin! <laughs> Queen Bee catches her as mid-toss, swiftly opens it with a flick of her wrist, and proceeds to pour the water over her face to cool herself off. The water splashes down from her face and drips onto her chest, making her wet and shine in the hot sun. <laughs> Hose me down! <laughs> oh my. I suddenly feel very hot myself and could use a quick dip in the ocean. Thanks for the water, kid. Yeah, you're welcome. Still, I really wanted to play some beach volleyball. Guess that's not gonna happen now. Both of them look quite content to relax and chat in the sun for now. Uh, let's see. Uh, bump it, I guess? I quickly clasp my hands together, squat, and bump the ball back to Queen Bee. She simply bumps the ball over to Gavin, and forming a, tri and forming a triangle, we continue hitting the ball back and forth. Let's see. Okay. Cool. Hit the waves, played some games, chilled with friends. It's a good time to be alive, Sky. Thanks for having me along on this ride. Speaking of having folks along, we're all getting together for a big group thing. And I always got some kind of surprise in mind. You game? Absolutely. Great. Meet you in the shade. I wonder what this is all about. Oh, right, yeah. The the uh, the, fl fl the flirtatious option. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I love that, like, even though I'm not doing the Queen Bee romance, like, they're still, like, hey, check out how hot Queen Bee is. Like, yes, I will, thanks. <laughs> Alright, so, we did the whole, uh, bento thing. A funny thing happened on the way to the Funplex. <laughs> you know, I wasn't expecting much of anything from the Funplex. A job's a job, right? The whole idea of working in an arcade was kind of silly, but the funny thing is, it stopped being a joke and became a thing I cared about. We work in an arcade! How cool is that? We have fun, we make sure everybody's having fun, it's 100% fun from top to bottom. I can't honestly think of anywhere else I'd rather be. Every day is like a vacation. I mean, sure it's hard work, but it doesn't feel so hard, not with you around. So here's the funplex. May it remain fun forevermore. Right on! Fun is job number one. And you put the fun in Funplex. Okay, good. On a roll. Let's see, what to say next. Uh, I think I did this time, this one last time. Did I? Yeah, I did. Okay. This beach was my family's special place. It can be ours, too. Long ago, Flotsam Beach was a home away from home for my family. We'd rent a house in the dunes and just relax for a solid week. Play board games, read books, go out and have a swim, or cruise the boardwalk arcades. It's a place that could be anything you need it to be. Quiet solace? Sure. Loud and exciting fun? Absolutely. I can't think of a better place for us to celebrate what we've accomplished together. Even if we're only here a day, we'll make the most of it. Indeed. Fine times with fine folk in a fine place. It's just the ticket. I propose we return here every year if our good fortunes continue. Now to bring it on home. Uh, let's see. Did we do I think we, we did not do this one, right? Yeah, we did not. Enough talking! Let the food and ink commence! I babbled on more than enough. Hunger! It gnaws at me! It saps my very life essence! The food and ink calls and must not be denied! Boxes open! Devour! Consume! The food and ink! The food and ink! This is so cool going to Flotsam with you, Sky, And all your great friends and this great food and it's all so great! Let's eat, everyone! 
Let's eat, comma, everyone. <laughs> that comma's very important. <laughs> this is the moment. One perfect moment with, well, moment with all of us together, laughing and talking and eating and having the best time in the world. Maybe things will change after tonight when Iris's plan to find me romance comes together. Maybe this is the high water mark. Maybe... But no matter what happens, I'll always have this one perfect moment. Eat everyone! <laughs> Let's eat everyone! <laughs> Juniper, secret cannibal. <laughs> Alright, candy store! Out of the corner of my eye, I see Teo and Naomi sneak into one of the shops on the boardwalk called the Sandy Bar with little little iconic saltwater taffy icons on each side. I just realized, okay, I didn't even get this joke the first time through, but now I get it. The Sandy Bar. Like, the candy bar, but sandy instead of candy. I get it. <laughs> saltwater taffy. Yes. Wow. Naomi is just too much right now. Every time her eyes light up and seeing a new candy, it turns my heart to mush. A mushy, mushy mess of emotions. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> this is the best part about going to the beach. Look at how many different candies there are. I can just devour them all. And that is, right after I devour you, Sky. Oh my. I thought maybe since we were all on holiday, I'd get a vacation from Tao, always making me blush. Oh, come on! Quite the opposite! <laughs> I figure on holiday he'd be even more incorrigible. But not today! My face goes as red as the licorice right in front of me. Now, I pegged Naomi as having a sweet tooth, but Teo, with all his dancing, I would have guessed him to stick to a healthier diet. Oh, come on, you saw that giant piece of chocolate cake he inhaled. <laughs> well, that I helped him inhale. <laughs> but this trip is a vacation for all of us, so maybe he's spoiling himself. Oh, what do you think of the place? Who, me? Oh, I've been here before. Quite a few times. It's the most popular candy store on the boardwalk. My family and I would always stop, stop by right before our long drive home. After a long day of swimming, walking, and fun in the sun, a maximum sugar overdrive was the perfect way to end the day. They'd give me a fistful of dollars and cut me loose in here. Whoa! They just let you get whatever you wanted? Dang, I wish I had your parents. Cute! I could just see a young Sky here, running around and stuffing candy into her face. Not gonna lie, I was a cute kid. Not so cute when overdosing on sweets, though. Both Naomi and Teo laughed heartily. I mean, they didn't exactly give me Fort Knox to blow on snacks, but it was still a nice little reward at the end of the day. As I am a creature of habit, I'd always get saltwater taffy year after year. It's just the best feeling, munching on taffy while watching the waves crash into the sand. Okay, yes. So... Oh, right. So... Kid, bumping into Naomi, grabbing candy. What did we do last time? Uh, I think I pointed out the thief last time. So let's pick up the mess. Even though the kid is swiping sour gummies, cleaning up this mess is going to be more of a help than snitching. I'm sure the cashier is on it anyway. This isn't the first time a child has tried to steal candy, nor will it be the last. I go around and pick up as much candy as I can find and start putting it back where it belongs. It's like a reverse egg hunt, and much more fun than trying to find stray tokens on the funplex carpet. Meanwhile, before he can abscond with stolen sweets, the cashier approaches the kid and asks him to turn out his pockets. The kid looks like they want to say something in return, but there is no way to hide it, and the kid reluctantly does so. It appears like the kid wasn't just picking up stuff from the spill, those pockets were quite full. With more tact than I could probably muster, the cashier tells them to kindly exit the sandy bar, and the kid complies. The cashier and I exchange knowing glances. We are one and the same. Well, after that excitement, I'm ready to relax on the beach and eat some of this candy. Me too. Me three! But I can't quite leave yet. There's still one more thing I must do. Solar taffy. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh yes, Teo says butter popcorn. So, butter popcorn it is. And we did this one last time. So yes. Yay! Butter popcorn. Yum. Uh, let's do this one. Juniper and Francine are shopping for souvenirs. I don't think we did that one last time. 
Juniper and Francine are looking at a little map of the boardwalk. It highlights all the shops, cafes, and art galleries along the route. I overheard them discuss it earlier in the day, and it looks like they might have found one. Oh, looky! There's one called Drift Away! Cute! Oh, and they also do wine tasting! I'm a fan of wine, and tasting it. A nice after-lunch Merlot is always a nice treat, isn't it? Juniper and Francine are quite the odd couple, aren't they? But when I reflect on it, they've actually been spending some time together at the Funplex. Juniper is a self-proclaimed old lady at heart, after all, so it's no wonder they've bonded over knitting, cats, and costume jewelry. Hey, mind if I join you? Of course not! Francine and I are just deciding on which art gallery to visit first. I've been in the market to find a unique sculpture made from driftwood. And what better place to get one than at the beach itself? That does seem like a wise choice. There is this one place that I must visit again. It's called Seascapes, and it's been open since I was a child. I know it's hard for you to imagine, but yes, old Francine was once young and spirited, just like yourself, Skye. I bet you were the talk of the boardwalk, breaking all the hearts. <laughs> I like that little wink, that's cute. My, oh my! Oh, a lady never spills her secrets. But yes, I did have my fair share of summer romance here along the boardwalk. Ooh, go on. This I must know. Well, there was this one time I, that I snuck out in the middle of a moonlit night to meet my lover. It was quite exhilarating. Of course, we simply had to go skinny dipping. Please. No. Stop. If there is one thing I definitely don't need to know more of, it's my boss's love life. I already know too much from my, from my interview with Francine. TMI. So, Seascapes, that was the name of the gallery? Let's go there, now. Wait, wait, I didn't catch it the first time. But did you say Seascapes? The Seascapes? The oldest art gallery on the boardwalk? The one and only. There is a lot of history in these old coastal towns. It also has an eerie past. Didn't you know? Seascapes is totally haunted. Sweet. Francine lets out a snort. Let's be sensible. Oh, sweet child, that's preposterous. Ghosts aren't real. But the Boardwalk Paranormal Society has deemed Seascapes the most haunted place on the coast. As the story goes, the previous owner purchased a particularly gorgeous painting. But what the owner didn't know was that that painting was being possessed with a demonic spirit. Soon after buying the art and hanging it up in the gallery, the owner got very ill. It was a mysterious illness that no one could cure. Eventually, the gallerist passed and their ghost has haunted seascapes to this day. Curiosity's got me, and after having experienced some unexplainably spooky stuff in the recent dish past, I pull out my phone and look it up. Juniper's not lying. I've heard several spooky stories with this art gallery. Maybe it's haunted by the memories of the past, but surely you can't believe in such childish superstitions. Oh dear. Sky talk some sense to Juniper. What? Me? Come on, Sky, back me up on this. Well, the truth is... Hmm... Uh, let's go with this one. There are unexplainable things in this world, but... I'm not sure I believe 100% in ghosts. At the manor, there were some weird goings on with a Polybius, but is it fair to call it paranormal? Maybe it's just math and microchips, like Iris said. I'm still waiting on science to prove me right or wrong on that. In good faith, I can't choose either one. Nothing in this world can prove or disprove the reality of ghosts. Sure, I enjoy a spooky ghost story as much as the next person, but do I believe them? Fair enough. We've watched enough, gro enough ghost bros to know that sometimes people overact in those situations. And I can't ignore that I do love an entrancingly scary story. So we are all in agreement then? Mm-hmm. Yep. To seascapes. <laughs> One short walk down the boardwalk later and we arrive at... Well, I don't notice anything overtly haunted. I mean, the building itself isn't dilapidated, but it could use a new paint job and a new fence and maybe upgrade the windows. Being right on the boardwalk with wide open doorways, we, we, can, walk, we can walk right in and hopefully not have the whole thing collapse on top of us. Okay, so it's a mess of building compared to the other shops along the boardwalk, but it adds to the historic charm. But to its defense, it does have a sign on the window that says free wine tasting, so I know Juniper will be ecstatic about that. Yes! Ooh, free wine tastings! As if on cue, I'm so thrilled. It hasn't changed in years. Still looks like how I remember it. Francine takes a deep breath as a smile creases her wrinkled cheeks. 
The only other times I've seen her this elated is when she's talking about the fun flex. She takes a moment's pause before walking through the door. Juniper looks over at me, side-eyed. Let's hope the only scary thing about this place isn't just their selection of reds. I held back a cackle as I push open the door. A small bell rings as both small shops on the strip alerted the gallery owner of our arrival. Paintings adorn the wall, beautiful scenes of the ocean, sea life, and of the boardwalk itself, each having its own unique style. There are copper statues of whale flutes, colorful glass-blown orbs mixed in, with a, mixed in among the paintings. Several people are talking in hushed tones around the gallery, and I notice Francine has already wandered over to an impressive selection of driftwood creations. Over here, dearies, I think I found the one. Already? You've only been in here for five minutes! Hmm. Honey, when you're as old as I am, you don't have that much time to sit around and deliberate about art. You go with what feels right, follow your heart and all that jazz. But I wanted to peruse the art a bit more. I was hoping maybe a ghastly hand would grab my shoulder, or maybe I'd see an actual ghost. We can stay as long as you'd like, I'm in no rush. Yes! Come at me, ghosties! So, Francine, what did you decide on? As a kid, visiting art galleries was never my prerogative, so I, had, so I had no idea the amount of things you could make out of driftwood. Stick wreaths, candle holders, tables. Francine points to a heart, weaved together from several sea-worn branches. Simple. And meaningful. That's adorable! It reminds me not only of the many times my late husband and I would visit the beach, but it also reflects my love for the ocean itself. How romantic! I hope one day my partner will buy me something like that. Sky, you've been my partner in crime for forever, and I want to get something to remember this trip by. If you have the coin, I'm sure Seascapes has the wares. <laughs> because Seascapes is a Khajiit, apparently. <laughs> but what should I get? Will you help me choose something? I mean, it'll be going up in our apartment, so you should get a say in this. Sure thing, Juniper. Oh, how marvelous. Ah, young love. Did Francine really just say that? Juniper didn't react. Or maybe she did. She was looking away at the moment. Hard to say. I take some time to go over my options. I need to find something that Juniper will like and cherish. This is an important decision. I don't want to choose the wrong thing and disappoint her. We've been through so much together, and I want her to know how much she means to me. See anything worthwhile? I think I found the perfect thing. What do you think about... <laughs> hmm... Yeah. A glass blown sculpture of a jellyfish. I mean, have you seen those things? Those are cool. This is cute and peculiar enough, just like Juniper's tastes. She's sure to find satisfaction in this. I don't think you're ready for this jellyfish. <laughs> really? Juniper laughs, but then realizing I was serious, quiets down quickly. Oh, I mean, it's really adorable? Jellyfish are so weird. Just stomachs, tentacles, and gonads. Isn't that all you need in life? I like an animal with a brain, personally, but to each their own. Thanks anyway, Sky. The sentiment isn't lost on me. Well, kids, I'm about done here. I don't have as much energy as you both do, and I think I'm ready for my afternoon nap. I'll walk you to the hotel, Francine. And a little afternoon siesta does sound nice, especially because there will be lots to do later on tonight. You are such a dear, Juniper. I think I might go back to see what other, to see what other people are doing. Taking advantage of your vacation is... Didn't you hear that? Hear what, dearie? It sounded like a woman saying, Save yourselves. Uh, no? Are you sure? I wouldn't lie about this. And did you feel that shift in temperature? It's just a sweet ocean breeze tickling your face. Don't let those ghost tales get to your head. Well, you both were just on your way out, so... Good point. See you later, Sky. Thanks for joining this old lady on her shopping expedition. Juniper practically drags poor Francine outside the gallery as fast as she can. Once out of sight, I reflect once more on the allure of the art to make my way outside to see if I can tag along with the others. Hmm, who to hang out with? Um. Mm, how about them? We haven't hung out with uh, Ashley in a while. Oh yes, ski ball. Uh, may the odds be ever in your favor. In all fairness, I'm something of a skee-ball master. Still, may the odds be ever in your favor and may the best player win. Which will be me, of course. 
Ooh, a Gavin boast. That's rare. It's not a boast if it's a fact. Dang, Gavin. <laughs> Uh, and given Gavin's rather manly physique on display right now, I'm a bit surprised he's not throwing them forcefully enough. Hmm, I could wish for some advice to one of them, maybe give them an edge. Let's see. Uh, we did ask you last time, so, psst, Gavin, here's the trick. I'll lean in close to Gavin and give him a tip. Aim for the 40-point pot, always. Gavin quirks an eyebrow at me, but seems to catch on to why I'm suggesting it right away. No further words needed. The trick for skee-ball is consistency. The 100-point pot is a trap. Hitting it takes precision on a clunky old game, but aim dead center, and you'll always net a, reason net a reasonable amount of points. 20 at worst, 50 at best. Soon enough, scores are in, and Gavin's won the game, scraping just slightly past me and leaving Ashley in the dust. Aw, oh, but I lost. Aw, made Ashley cry. Apologies. To be fair, Sky gave me some advice. Yellow card! Foul on the play! Tainted results! But you can make it up to me by having us split the ice cream three ways. Everybody wins. That seems fair. Indeed. Most importantly, we had fun. We sure did. Okay. Naomi has a kind heart and so do you. That's a plus. Gavin may be blunt, but he aspires to be kind. And you're already kindly. Queen Bee's got a wicked sense of humor and your quirky nature matches it. Percy carries himself with good cheer and a kind heart. He's a terrific match for your own quirky and kindly heart. Ah, okay. Teo lives to have fun. I'm sure both of you quirky funsters would get along well. And that's everybody. In my final analysis, I think you are the best possible match for... Teo, Percy, and Naomi. All three would make a fine companion for you, Sky. Teo, Percy, and Naomi all get along well with you and match your personality. So... Teo, Percy, and Naomi? My sources say yes. Yes! I calculate you'll have the best probability of success with them. Numbers. All based on numbers. High score. Um... Yeah, okay. Let's just run with this. I've come this far. Wait. Did I not do that one already? What if they're just not into people like me? Maybe I'm overthinking this, given we get along great already, but what if I ask them out and it turns out they're not into people like me? Sexuality hasn't exactly popped up in casual conversation yet with anyone. Sky, a little more faith in me than that. I wouldn't suggest anyone if their compass wasn't pointed in your direction. Also, Teo's made it pretty fucking obvious he's into me. <laughs> Don't worry, my analysis is sound. Well, at least I won't have that awkward moment then. Just the awkwardness of approaching someone based on a numeric score. Iris lets out a little, a little digital sigh. I don't think you're looking at this score thing the right way, Sky. I'm software, right? I have to see the world through numbers. I see relationships as numbers. I see your vocal tones as numbers. And I score it all. But the math is less important than the meaning. I see a number. But that number represents your free will and your heart. You chose to spend time with them. You shared good times with smiles and laughter and sometimes even tears. This isn't like a dating website. You aren't asking a total stranger out just because the numbers match. <laughs> you need to switch the causal relationship around. I need to ask for a casual relationship? Causal. As in the cause of. You aren't spending time with them because of the numbers. The numbers exist because you wanted to spend time with them. You've been building these relationships for months. Now, you can take one to the next level. The numbers can be your guide if you let them. But follow your heart. Above all else, follow your heart. Okay? Okay, got it. Right. So let's not limit ourselves here. Of all those who are special to you, which one do you want to share your heart with? It's a big decision. But she's right. She's been watching me, listening to me, understanding me. But in the end, it's my choice and their choice to accept my love or not. But which one do I love? Which one should I approach? Tao. <laughs> Tao. I let his name linger on my lips, if only for a moment. 
It's sweet and happy, just like him. For me, there is no other choice. Teo is the one my heart has been guiding me towards. The constant affection he showers me with already makes me swoon, and now it's my time to share my feelings with him. Yes, it's Teo. I say his name again, this time with more confidence, a reassurance of my sentiment towards him. Well, duh! Hasn't he been pretty much constantly flirting with you already? Well, yeah, but he flirts with everyone. I just hope there's more than friendly teasing going on. Very well! I believe there's only one thing left to do and that's... what's the phrase? Follow your heart? That's the one, Iris. And I hope my heart is leading me in the right direction. Oh, I'm sure you'll be happy with the results. Sky, I shall leave you to it. Now, all I have to do is find Teo, because he's not loitering around with the other fun flexors. I scan the beach horizon. There are plenty of people still milling about, packing up their beach spots and closing out the day. Nope, that's beach jellyfish. And that's just a smushed sandcastle. Oh, great. I finally get up enough courage and you split town. Gone forever. Lost to the alluring call of the sea, I... Wait! There he is! Teo struck up a conversation with some other randos on the beach. I watch him for a minute, examining his movements. Something is off, however. I could tell even from here. His expression is hesitant and nervous, and normally his hand motions are much more fluid and less agitated than what I'm seeing. He glances over, and from the corner of his eye he notices me standing, standing here. I watch on as, from what I can tell, he excuses himself from the conversation. As he directs his attention my way, his entire body relaxes. No longer the trepidation on his face, and there is an ease in his wave to me. He smiles at me instantly. Noticing this change makes me notice the shift in my own body. As he gets closer, I feel... Excited. <laughs> my heart begins to beat faster in my chest as I smile from ear to ear. This is what I've been looking forward to. Hey, Teo. Beautiful evening, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Not as beautiful as you. You always do have a way with words. But, Teo, I want to ask you something important. Oh, yeah? I wanted to ask you something, too. What a coincidence. I wonder, if it's the, I wonder if it's the same thing. Well, I was hoping you weren't going to be busy for the rest of the evening, and that maybe you would like to spend it with me? Oh, why, I was going to ask you the same thing. You just beat me to it. I want nothing more than for us to be arm in arm, strolling across the ocean, the waves bubbling up to our feet. <sighs> Wait a sec. Does that mean you're asking me out on a date? Well, yeah, but... To be fair, I think you just asked me out on a date on a date too. Which I'm in agreement with. Let's do the date thing. What? Really? That's great. Awkwardly, we both look away, but it's only for a moment, quickly returning our gaze to one another. Oh my god, this is adorable. <laughs> I, uh, didn't really have much planned except wanting to spend time with you. I'm not the best at planning impromptu dates. Or even planned dates, for that matter. For the record, I am very bad at dating. But don't even worry. I think I got the perfect idea. You do? Of course you do. You are not only the king of da dance, but you are probably the king of dates, too. I think you think very highly of me, but flirting doesn't always yield results. <laughs> I've been much too busy to invest any time into a proper dating life, but you? All right. Thank you for coming by. I definitely will enjoy my Teo. <laughs> enjoy your bed. You are worth every second. <laughs> but I'm getting off track, as I often do when staring at you. <laughs> I was perusing the local newspaper today, and I came across a drop-in special for the local dancing company. Ooh, dancing date. So, what say you? Will you let me sweep you off your feet? Any day. But you know how bad of a dancer I am. You've watched me play Showtime stage. I don't so much score points as flail my arms and legs around. It's neither graceful nor coordinated. I am, in fact, a danger to myself and others on the dance floor. Oh, I know. You weren't supposed to agree with me on that, Teo. Relax, Sky. I was only teasing. And that's why I choose a dance style that I have no background in whatsoever. So actually, we'll be in the same boat. I'm afraid. Are there life vests on this boat? I might drown in a sea of missteps and sprained ankles. Also, now that I think of it, how can you, Swan Lake Teo, be bad at any dance regardless of the type? We all have our strengths and weaknesses. And pray tell, what's your weakness? Ballroom dancing. Knew it! <laughs> what? When I picture ballroom dancing, I don't think of me and Teo. 
I think of ladies wearing extravagantly ruffled dresses covered in millions of sequins, men dressed in suits with their tails dangling behind them, and lots and lots of waltzing. Surely, no jesting here, Sky. Teo breaks our eye contact, turning to gaze at the ocean shore. For the past several months I've known you, you keep encouraging me to do more for myself. You've told me I focus too much on pleasing others and that I don't spend enough time on me. And you're completely right, Sky. Well, I've been listening, and there is one thing I want. What's that? I want to expand my dancing repertoire. I want to better myself and surpass the dancing talent I already have. I want to be a better Teo. Showtime Stage is a phenomenal game, and I love getting up there and strutting my stuff. But being in that community has taken me back to where it all started. Back to my first passion. Dancing. It's always been dancing. Being able to express myself through the flick of a wrist or the stomp of my foot. <laughs> Nothing is more poetic nor alluring. Yeah. Well, save for you, of course. <laughs> Oh, stop. Ballroom dancing has been the one style I've drawn away from, because you need two people to do it. And I've just never found the right partner. Aw. Teo's longing gaze leaves, leaves the ocean to face, to face me once more. Er, bleh, bleh. Sorry, I, I was distracted for some reason. Teo's longing gaze leaves the ocean to face me once again. His eyes are kind yet intense, and a smile gently parts his lips. Until now. My face flushes instantly, and I cannot break away from his gaze. Teo steps closer to me, and my heart beats faster. I lied before. Uh, about what? There are two things I want. Y yes Teo grins wider now, his face is ever so slowly leading towards mine. The first one is still the same, becoming a better dancer. But the second one is something I've longed for for a while. My heart feels like it's going to beat right out of my chest. And that is? A kiss from you. Would that be asking too much? Give me some sugar! <laughs> Go on and kiss me already. I would very much like to kiss you too. The smile melts in my heart as we were inches away from each other. We both close our eyes and our lips meet. Teo's lips are warm and soft and I feel a wave of emotion wash over me. Before I know it, however, the kiss is over. His warmth leaves and we're apart. It was a delicate and simple kiss, one of honesty and appreciation. And it was perfect. Teo steps back and stretches out his arm toward me, his palm wide open. So, Sky, I ask you again. Will you finally let me sweep you off your feet this time? I gently place my hand in his and he squeezes tightly. Yes, please, sweep away. <laughs> We arrive at all the right moves, Flotsam's dance hall. As much as I wanted to try out balls and ballroom dancing in my fanciest attire, I didn't think to bring it to the beach. Hopefully my usual hoodie will be adequate for all the twirling and sliding. Oh my god, I want to see Teo in like a, a like a, a tuxedo, not, not a tuxedo, well, yes, that too, but like, dancer style tuxedo. <laughs> suit. Ballroom dancing suit thing. Entering the dance hall, I respect its quaintness, much like the rest of Flotsam. It's got a hardwood floor, plenty of space, and music playing. What more do you need? Maybe an anti-anxiety? I don't know how I'm going to survive this. It's a beginner's class, don't look so nervous. I'll try, but there are so many other people here. Several other couples hang about, some stretching, some chatting. You'll do fine. To be honest, most people will be too busy looking at their partners or themselves in the mirror to focus on what we are doing. Plus, they're going to make as many mistakes as we will. We are all just learning, no shame in that. Is ballroom dancing that difficult? You're making it seem difficult. Like, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being picking up rocks, which is easy, and 10 being slaying a dragon, which is nigh impossible. So, what are we dealing with? Six and a half. So, like, picking up the phone to an unknown caller. That rough, huh? Yep, I'm doomed. <laughs> yeah, not easy. But I know with you, by my, with you by my side, we can accomplish anything, including a waltz. You might have too much faith in my ability to not trip over my own feet. Whoa, hello. <laughs> Here's a new face. We continue chatting amongst ourselves for a little while until the instructor shows up. I can only assume so, since he's the one who looks the most confident among us. You'd have to be extremely confident to try to teach me how to dance. I applaud his moxie. The instructor sets up a vinyl record turntable, dropping the needle on a spicy waltz track. Immediately, speakers around the room crackle to life. 
Teo leans over and whispers to me. You ready? Yes? I think so. I need a rock slide. The instructor raises his hands into the air and claps twice to get our attention and hush our chatter. Welcome to the intro to ballroom dancing. My name is Octavius Price. Octavius Price. And I will be instructing you all and I will be instructing you in all the right moves. Oh, I get it. Like the name. The name of this place. Yes, exactly. You are a clever one, I can tell. But I hope you've all brought some passion to the dance floor this evening, because passion is the first step in becoming a dancer. You must feel the music with your entire body, and then use your entire body in tandem with your partner. Ballroom dancing is all about trusting your partner. The two of you will become one entity by the end of this class, completely in tune with one another. Octavius' voice was as rhythmic as the music, and his flamboyant expressions were matched with his hand motions. Every point he made was accentuated with a closed hand. His words made ballroom dancing very sensual and romantic even. Shall we begin? First of all, I want you to face your partner. I should like, yes, yeah, someone to like time his, his uh, words with the music here. Teo and I complied and couldn't help but smile shyly at each other. Something so innocent and simple felt so awkward and clumsy. Good, good. Now before we do anything else, I want you all to take a nice breath and relax. I was entirely grateful for the reminder to breathe as I was holding my breath the entire time. Next, I want you each to put a hand up to your partner's hand, feeling their weight against yours. No pushing or pulling, but balanced with each other. I, gen I gently put my hand up to Teo's and I could feel our nervousness in the dewiness of our palms. Excellent. This is the first step in, becoming co in being connected to your partner. From here, you can both try swaying back and forth. Do you feel each other in the warmth of your hands? We both start moving our hips from side to side. Years of dancing have made Teo's hip movements fluid and deft. It's entrancing. Nice move, Sky. Why, thank you. I blush and look down, embarrassed, but I let a grin slide on my face. Good, good. You are doing splendidly. Next, whoever is leading, cup your hand on your partner's shoulder blade, and the other will rest their hand on the leader's shoulder. Before I could do anything, Teo instantly rests his hand over my shoulder blade, and in return, I rest my arm on his. Octavius Price walks around the classroom, correcting people's posture and hand possessions. He stops next to Teo and I and pushes both of us closer together. Don't be afraid to get nice and cozy, either. Oh, I won't. Now that you two have become one, this is the first holding position. From here, you can do just about anything. Take another moment to truly feel each other's body, heart, and soul. You will need all three for the next moves. Teo and I are so very close. His body brushed up against mine and I can feel his warm breath on my neck. My heart swells being so near to him. Every time I, our eyes meet, I can't help but blush feverishly and bashfully look away. Keeping eye contact is insanely difficult at this point. And even though we shared a kiss already, this is definitely much more intimate. I won't ever let you go. Octavius proceeded to teach us some basic moves like the foxtrot, waltz, and the salsa. The foxtrot is not basic, from what I understand. That's a hard dance. <laughs> It took a while to get each of us each of the steps down, but after several missteps, much giggling, and lots of repetition, Teo and I were dancing as one. Dancing with Teo like this was a dream come true. I felt so comfortable to be in his arms, and we really were quite the pair. Wonderful, wonderful. I think you've earned some freestyle time. Uh, freestyle? Yes, yes, it's all about individual expression. Free form, if you will. Become one with your partner and the music. Let your heart and feet guide you. Do not think. Just act. Care to dance? What do you think? Shall we give it a go? Now that I've mastered the basics, I think I'm ready for some advanced techniques. But how should I use our free time? Hmm. I'd like to take the, I'd like to take the lead this time. Teo's been leading this entire time, and I think it's only fair that I get, I get a chance to try it out too. Teo, do you mind if I try being the one to lead? Not at all. I thought you'd never ask. It's too much pressure. Mm -hmm. Plus, I want you to show me what you got. Hell yeah. I grin wickedly at Teo as, as we quickly switch hand positions. I'm much more suited for the leading role anyway. As event manager, I know how to take control. Oh my, those words are like music to my ears. Lead on. Oh, he's a sub. <laughs> 
well, probably a switch. <laughs> we repeat all the basic moves we learned earlier in the class. It feels mostly the same, but nice to be the one controlling the direction. Teo's feet follow mine in perfect harmony, and before we know it, we are twirling around the dance floor in a balletic waltz. Teo smiles wide as I guide him into an underarm turn. Now this I could get used to. Hold on tight, Teo. I've saved my best move for last. Ooh, are you gonna dip him? Dip him! <laughs> oh? Show me. Yes! <laughs> I called it! <laughs> I wrap my arm around Teo's waist and dip him. His foot gracefully kicks up in the air as he completely puts his trust in me not to, dro to not drop him. <laughs> awesome! I respond by keeping a firm and comforting hold of him and dip him even lower. Our eyes lock and we're instantly lost in each other's gazes. I dare not turn away, not even for a second. This is where I want to be, just like this. Octavius Price interrupts our moment with a clap of his hands. It was only a moment, but I gently bring Teo back up, never letting go of his hand, and we listen to what our instructor has to say. Excellent job, everyone. You all should give yourself a pat on the back. And thus concludes the intro to ballroom dancing class. I hope you've all enjoyed yourselves, and we will see you next time at All the Right Moves. We all clap for each other, and Octavius took a slight bow. As people began shuffling out of the hall, Teo and I lingered for a moment to smile at each other and just enjoy the moment. We had such a good time, and I do have to say, for not knowing anything, Teo and I did remarkably well. Octavius even took note that we far excelled the other couples in the room. We both have so much potential, I'm amazed. Not everyone catches on as quickly as you two did. I have a special going on right now. You two should come back and do some private lessons with me. <laughs> we would, but I'm afraid we're only here on holiday for the weekend. Quite the shame, really. But if you are ever back in Flotsam, don't forget your friend, Octavius Price. I don't think we could forget you if we tried. Idly, I wonder if maybe this guy is a distant cousin of Hamza. <laughs> I'd believe it. The three of us all had a nice chuckle before Teo and I turned to each other once more. Hey, I gotta hang and do some night swimming. Let's go cool off by the waves. That sounds absolutely perfect. Dancing did work out quite the sweat, and the nice cool ocean breeze would feel good against the skin. Plus, I don't want this evening to end anytime soon. Skinny dipping! Skinny dipping! <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> After a quick ride back to the hotel to freshen up, we found ourselves back on the beach. The full moon hung in the midnight sky, twinkling stars illuminating the sandy shore. You couldn't have asked for a more perfect night. So, here we are, back on the beach. The waves are calm, and the water is still warm. By the coy tone in Teo's voice, I knew something was up. But exactly what kind of shenanigans Teo was planning, I wasn't sure. Before I could inquire, Teo immediately starts shedding clothes. First his sleeveless sweatshirt. I can feel my body temperature rise exponentially as I can't help but stare at his well-defined pectoralis muscles. Then his track pants. Yeah! <laughs> I make a fist with my hands and concentrate, trying desperately to keep my mind and body in check. <laughs> Leaving only his very small swimwear. I have already witnessed all the glory that is Teo and a Speedo from earlier today, but this feels so much different after everything we've shared this evening. Normally I could fool myself into it just being a nice dream, but now it's suddenly become very real very quickly. Let's go skinny dipping! Yes! Call it again! <laughs> what? 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 Skinny dipping with Teo? Uh, yes. <laughs> Count me in! I mean, why not? You're only young and carefree once once, right? It's an innocent little swim. Who am I kidding? That's about as corrupt as one can get, but to hell with it! Skinny dipping! Hecking yes! I start to remove my clothes, but before I get anywhere, Teo stops me. Sky, I was only joking. Teo! You can't just do that to someone! But I just did. When you said night swimming, I thought you meant swimming at night time, like the current time of day it is. <laughs> Teo busts up laughing. Night swimming is the definition of skinny dipping. It is not! Is it? It is! Astonished, I felt for such a silly trick, I can't help but laugh with Teo. I chide him in jest. You are bad. Mm -hmm. What can I say? I'm a naughty boy. You need a spanking. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I really did want to go swimming. Teo gives one more wink in my direction before darting towards the ocean. With a runner's sprint, he hits the shore in no time and takes a leaping dive right into the crashing waves. 
Seconds later, he emerges from the, from the ocean, combing his hands through his saltwater-soaked hair. Come on in, the water is perfect! But it's freezing. <laughs> a refreshing dip in the ocean with Teo does sound like fun, but do I chance getting wet this late at night? <laughs> Make me. <laughs> I like teasing Teo as much as he enjoys teasing me. It's about time he got a taste of his own medicine. I give him my best wink. I bet you can't get me in that ocean. Go ahead and try and make me. Oh, is that a challenge? Tis. I think this is one I'm about to win. The playfulness of our banter turns into Teo bounding toward me. You can't catch me! I wait till he gets closer. I wait till he gets closer and roll right out and roll right out of his grasp. You're fast, but not fast enough. Teo darts around and catches me in a hug. I laugh happily as he picks me up. I playfully fight back and he squeezes me closer. Both of us have huge smiles on our faces. Yes, this is exactly my my kind of thing. <laughs> Russells! <laughs> Still in his embrace, he walks us back into the ocean, the cool water tickling my skin. What was that about not being able to get you into the ocean? Fine, fine, you win this time. Teo lets me down gently, and the second he has his back turned, I dunk my hands into the water. Scooping as much water as I can, I splash him with all my strength. I continue the onslaught until I feel he is appropriately drenched and my arms tire. Teo laughs and smiles in return. I deserved that, didn't I? He did, and now we are even. Good. A truce is in order, then. I accept. We are now officially truced. As much as the water feels nice, it is relatively cold and I feel my skin prickle. Even in the moonlight, Teo takes notice of it. We don't want you to turn to a prune, do we? No, but I don't think I would mind being a plum if I had to be a fruit. Make that a papaya. <laughs> Teo walks over to me and puts his hands on my shoulders. Once again, I find myself lost in his gaze, his gentle expression accentuated in the light of the moon. Come on, let's get you out of the ocean. Let me carry you back? It's only fair since I carried you in. I nod in agreement. Teo leans over, putting his arm in the crook of my knees. I gently fall into him as he picks me up. Ah, so cute! <laughs> <laughs> my arms find themselves wrapping around his neck and I bury my flushed face into his chest. Teo carries me ashore and gently places me on the sand. My toes touch the gritty sand and once I'm stable beneath my feet, I look back up at Teo. He brings up his hand and places it on my cheek and nuzzle my face into his, into his soft hand and gingerly kisses his palm. You are stunning. Smiling, he waits for my gaze to return to his before he leans over and kisses me passionately. I can still taste the ocean salt on his lips. <laughs> All good things must come to pass. Must come to an end. Plus, it's very cold and I feel a burning need to be very dry again. Soon we've toweled off, changed back to our normal, if now somewhat damp, clothes and are enjoying the evening air rather than the evening water. <laughs> I know this might seem sudden, but you mean so much to me. <laughs> so cute! <laughs> hey, Dr. Hugo, thank you! Thank you for the bits. Truth is, I feel the same way, Teo. Well then, I'm glad we're in agreement. You inspire me to be a better person. To keep working on myself and also remembering to take time to honor myself. Teo, I want you to know I will always be here for you, cheering you on. Teo wraps his arms around me and hugs me close. Thanks. Thanks for indulging me with the ballroom dancing, and thank you for joining me on this lovely evening. I'll do it as many times as you want. It was totally a new experience, and I'm glad I got to share it with you. I'm gonna hold you to that. Teo's arms relax, and he reaches behind himself to retrieve a small picnic basket. When did you... A gentleman never divulges his secrets. Fair enough. I gladly start munching on a miniature feast of fruit, cheese, and bread. Teo joins me and pours us each a glass of wine. Let us toast to this magnificent evening. To you. I clink my glass with his. To you. We continue toasting to everything and anything. To the moon, to the stars, to the funplex. Eventually my stomach is satisfied and I'm feeling a little tipsy from all the toasts. I scoop myself up next to Teo when he lays his arm around my shoulders. I lay my head on Teo's shoulder and he hugs me close. I can feel his warmth and I smile wide. At this rate, I know I won't get much sleep, but I couldn't care less. I feel such peace being in his arms. I cuddle up closer to him and he squeezes me tight. You're wonderful. You too. 
There is nothing else to say. For the rest of our time on the, be on this on the beach, we enjoy the silence of the night, save for the crash of the waves on the shore. And that's how Teo and I found each other. I had called our lunchtime party the high water mark, one, perfe one perfect moment in time, but I was wrong. This was it. And in the difficult weeks ahead, I'd cling to that high water mark in hopes, that the, w in hopes the wave would roll my way again. Yay! Woo! We're done! Wait, hold on. Uh, right, yes. Well, we're not done, but we're done with uh, with that chapter. Save the game. We got uh, we got ten minutes left. We can keep keep playing for a bit longer. Hit the lever. Wrong lever. <laughs> Why do we even have that lever? <laughs> okay. Blah, blah, blah. Oh right. So this okay, this will be our our, our meeting with Deco Nami. Um I'll look my dapperest for the villainous gentleman. Then I shall don my Sunday's best to meet the mustache twirling ruffian of arcade legend with pride. Wait. Oh wait, we did that one already. Hold on, wait. Wait, hold on. Okay, wait. So we did that one already. Uh, you can count on me. I'll represent the Funplex. Say no more. I'd be happy to represent the Funplex with dignity. Good, good. But remember, offer only as much respect as you are given. If he should be uncouth, you have my permission to be uncouth as well. There are many exploiters and users in this industry. And undoubtedly, Dekonami ranks in their number. So smile if he smiles, but use caution. So go there and turn him down. Got it. Let's see. It's about you. It's about your co-workers. It's about all our regulars. You've made me realize that. And I'm thankful. Uh, let's see. I think we did this one last time. Your kingdom is mine to rule, but seriously. Ha 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 ha! At last, all that the neon light touches is mine. I have, I have ascended the ziggurat of arcade majesty to rule over all with a terrible iron fist. But seriously, you're the one who built that ziggurat. I owe you a lot. And if you don't want me to sell, I won't sell. Oh, <laughs> you're a peach, dear. Uh, let's see. I'm happy to consider you part of my family. No. Okay, we did this one last time. <laughs> You're the grandma I never had, Francine. I never knew my grandmothers, either of them. They died when I was really young. I feel like you filled that role. You've become the grandmother I never had, Miss Francine. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm the opposite, actually. I, I uh, knew both of my grandmothers growing up, but I never knew either of my grandfathers. Welcome home, Sky. You'll always be welcome here. Okay, let's see. Make the right decision. So, we did this one last time. Let's try this one. Arcades can't stagnate. Maybe change is inevitable. Look, let's be honest about this. We've done good work with the Funplex, it's definitely soaring. But even I can see there are heights we just can't reach, not without more capital. If I can negotiate Deco Nami into a partnership, one where we can leverage his power to rise past our limits, yeah, this could work. This really could work. Jury's still out, but I'm definitely interested in hearing what he's got to offer us. If I like what I hear, sure, I'm game. My funplex must thrive. Now, who do I want to take as my plus one? Eh? You want to come with my date? I'm your girl Friday, but I'm, but I'm afraid you're not my type. My type being USB compatible, of course. I sensed you were in a state of deep ponderance and wanted to help. You're thinking of who to take to the meeting? Yeah, I mean, Tay was the obvious choice. I'm sure he'd have some opinions on Deco's palace. True, as part of the Funplex family, Tay would be a good pick. 
but this is a business meeting. You may want to consider widening your options. Tay will support your decision either way. It's clear he trusts you. True. Okay, then. Yeah, it's still gonna be Teo. <laughs> he understands arcade social communities. As usual, Teo's by Spotlight stage. He spent the whole day training a new dance recruit, someone I haven't seen before. Teo's been bringing in a lot of new people, actually, and once they finish the song, I wait for him to join me. Another newbie to join the crew? Teo places a finger under my chin and gently lifts until our eyes meet. Those sparkling eyes of yours are so very observant. Whoa, look at that face! <laughs> How I long to stare into them forever. They shine like the universe. Even as caught up as I am, I need to refocus. Yes, well, we can discuss that later. Over wine and candlelight? Of course. What I really wanted to my place then? Swell, but I need your help with something. Oh, my sweet, why didn't you say so sooner? I've been trying. You're right, I've been babbling again. I just get so lost in your charm. What's up? I know you're not exactly an employee of the Funplex, but you've got a talent for talking to people and pair- But you've got a talent for talking to people and pair with your positive nature, you be the best. Basically, Deco Nami wants to meet with me to discuss a business venture. Hopefully a mutually beneficial one, but who knows what could happen. Deco's Palace definitely has a more extensive selection of import rhythm games, even if they lack common joystick games. They're able to afford shipping them directly rather than waiting for the cabinets to be manufactured here. But they also don't spend the time cultivating the culture around those games, nor the upkeep it takes to keep those things working perfectly. Naomi's truly spoiled us with never having to wait long for an arrow or a drum to work properly. Overall, it's not my type of atmosphere, but I can't deny the duty's done for the genre. Some of those games you can't find anywhere else for a hundred miles. That's exactly why I wanted your opinion. You've got an open and honest mind about the whole thing. I'm always happy to help in any way I can, even if I'm not much of a business negotiator. And I get to spend more time with you, so it's a win-win. Just let me know when you're ready. I'll be at my usual spot. Don't make a big deal of this. Don't make a big deal of this. Don't make a big deal of this. You go there, analyze how he does business, come to the table with an offer that uh, come to the table with an offer that strengthens the funplex, then go home. This is big for us. Super big. It's going to be fine. Everything is fine. Teo offers to drive us across town to Deco's palace. Contrary to the talk before, we don't exchange many words. I'm deep in thought, running through all the, all, all the possibilities of what could happen, and I can't shake this feeling. Something is off. Even looking at the glowing neon temple of the distance, my stomach knots and I feel uneasy. When we finally pull up, the valet takes the car and glitzy blinking lights blind our eyes. Alright, let's skip over that a little bit. Oh wow, I forgot how over overstimulating this place can be. There is so much to do and so little time to see it all. We've got entire sections for rhythm games, racing games, and fighting games. What a waste to not want to invest in these great arcade communities. Uh, let's do this one. Have you tried to, ho to hold Showtime stage events here? This place is huge and you could fit the whole crew in here pretty easily. Have you considered hold hosting a dance-off here? I actually did do a few gatherings, but that was a long time ago. The quality of the cabinet wasn't up to my standards, though. I kept registering misses when they were clearly on point. It's so frustrating when a sensor malfunctions, and I didn't want to force my crew to play on fewer than perfect pads. It should be less than perfect pads. I heard through the grapevine that they have the newest Snap of Music game here, and I'm just itching to get my hands on it. Let's over to the Fist of Discomfort tournament. See you there, or I'll meet up with you after I get my groove on. Okay, some time to kill, but not that much time to kill. I'm going to be choosy. What do I want to check out while waiting for my dinner date with Destiny? Uh, let's see. We did these two. Let's, let's go get a drink. Let's get a drink. I'm thirsty as heck. I know I've got a big old dinner coming soon, but this place is sucking the moisture right out of my body somehow. I sidle up to the bar, looking to wet my whistle. And maybe get a snack, too. A fairly bored-looking bartender notices my approach and puts on a fake smile for my benefit. Welcome to Deco's Palace. How may I help you? Alcohol will require proof of identification. Rattled off in an even monotone by someone who gave up caring years ago. I enjoy beer as much as the next gal, but I think I'll stay stone-cold sober, sober before butting heads with Deco Nami. Yeah, hi. Um, can I get a diet soda and some fries? Uh-huh. Ew, why would you go for a diet soda? Blech. <laughs> Thank you. 
Do you want me to play some recorded music? Studies show it helps with long waits. Wondering what the holdup is, I try to find the bartender again despite the elbow to elbow crowd. Oh hey, it's Clyde! There we go. He's busy chatting with some teenager, probably another customer. Hey, uh, excuse me? Quickly, the customer mumbles something and takes a small object, a USB drive from the bartender, and notices me looking. Um, sorry. I just... I just had a thing to do. I'll get out of your way. Sorry to bother you. Uh, what was it you wanted again? Diet soda. French fries. Coming right up. I'm worried he's going to vanish from the face of the earth again, but... So he's back with some pre with some pre-prepared fries and a bubbly soda. Okay, how many points does this cost? Points are just for games. Cash or credit or phone pay. I absently wave my phone in his direction. Money for you! Ka-ching! Right, time to sample this appetizer. Is it yummy? Is it even edible? It's... I guess these are technically fries? Or something approaching an adequate approximation of deep-fried potato snack? Want me to add that to your online review? What? No! No online review! Last thing they want is to annoy Dekonami with a two-star report on his fried foodstuffs. I thought this place was supposed to be, you know, good food and good times. Not plausibly acceptable food and yet-to-be-had good times. Hmm. Huh. Weirdly enough, I did a search and there's not a single negative review of the food here. Oh, I know! Oh, I see why. Sky, more than half of these reviews were written by bots. I can tell the earmarks, one AI to another. There are recognizable heuristic patterns. So, he stuffs his own electronic ballot boxes. Who is this guy, a tin pot dictator? Well, that's the weird thing. The sites I'm checking have really good anti-bot control mechanisms. Like, I can't even post to some of them and I'm super awesome. This is weird. Do you want me to look into this more? If you trust me to, I mean. Heck yeah. Sure, why not? Dig around a bit. I trust you, Iris. Snoop around, but do so very quietly, okay? Okay. I don't know if I'll come up with much, but thanks for believing in me. I decide to finish off my snack and drink quickly so I can get back to exploring Dego's palace. Hmm, what next? We're gonna save here. And continue next week. I'm thinking, um... Next week I will act I will see what happens if I actually do uh, agree to sell the uh, the funplex. I will piss everybody off and it's gonna suck. <laughs> I'm sure it's like I mean the game I'm sure continues in some way. It'll just be like probably kinda awkward conversations. <laughs> but yeah, that's my plan for next time. Um and yeah, since there's only I think there's only like what, two chapters left? Yeah, there's only two chapters left, so and I, I'll, I'm guessing, considering I did two chapters tonight, we'll probably finish the game, we'll finish this playthrough by next week, by the end of next week, so that means I should um, put up a straw poll for the next game on my backlog that I'm going to play on Tuesdays. Um, again, it kind of it's kind of working out nicely because I think I may also end up finishing um, Kyrandia 3 next week as well, so... Similar to last time I started new games, and then start two more new games, like, right next to each other. Maybe. If, if things work out as I think they will. And they might not. Sometimes I take longer than I think I will. But yeah. Um, probably one more week of this, and then after that will be a new game. So I'll uh, have a straw pull up uh, at some point soon-ish. When I remember. <laughs> In the meantime... Let's find a raid person. Someone to raid. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What do we have? What do we have? Hmm. Gremlins 2. I don't know what that guy's playing. Elder Scrolls Online. Luigi's Mansion 3, Final Fantasy 7, that's always good. Uh, what's Taco Salad doing? Maniac Mansion Deluxe, nice. Yeah, let's do that. Maniac Mansion sounds cool. Taco Salad it is. I really should play Maniac Mansion, like, all the way through, because I've only ever played it once and I never finished it. 
So that's the thing that I should uh, take care of at some point in my life. And now that I have, uh, and I have the um, Day of the Tentacle remastered, which allows you to play Maniac Mansion within the game. So it's an option, it's something I should maybe consider streaming at some point. That'd be cool. So yes, thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for, for, uh, <laughs> for putting up with my, with my melting over Teo. <laughs> he makes me go all gooey. <laughs> So yes, um, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow for Reseteer, next Monday for Kyrandia 3, and next Tuesday for more of this. More arcade spirits, and uh, probably gonna piss a lot of people off, because <laughs> that's how I roll, apparently. So yes, thank you again, everyone. Good night!